Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today i got a little project we're going to be working on, uh, and basically what I'm doing is I'm making a modification to my auto collimator. Now, if you watch my channel regularly, you've seen me use this instrument here it's called the auto collimator, which is used for making extremely accurate measurements on the flatness of a surface. Um, I've talked about how it works before. I'm not going to go into all that right now, uh, but basically it's a telescope type product that you shoot a light beam down and back with and it measures the angle um, of the mirror on a sled and using that and using some mathematical calculations you can calculate the flatness of a surface extremely accurately down to millionths of an inch uh, which is uh, just you know, almost beyond what I can think about. But uh, it's a great tool. I've been using this over on my machinery building. I've been using it on my planar restoration, check the flatness of ways. I recently used it to check the calibration of my surface plate. Now my surface plate, this is granite plate here. This is a reference surface in the machine shop that we use uh, for all kinds of purposes, measuring off of. And uh, this plate here is three foot by six foot long uh, and I checked it and it actually is grading right now uh, as I got it as a A grade. Uh, surface plates are graded for how flat they are. There's three different grades. There's a double A, there's a single A, and then there's a B grade. Uh, and then anything that doesn't meet into, into a, one of those grades is, is really not even considered uh, a usable instrument. This one, after I checked it for flatness, graded an A. Uh, and I would like to get it up to a double A uh, and I'm going to be doing a video later on where we're going to be lapping this surface plate. Uh, I'm going to be doing it myself now that I've got my own auto collimator. I've been, I've been learning from an expert uh, down with Lance Balsley. He had a guy come in that actually is in the business and he's been giving both of us some lessons. We've been working on one of Lance's plates down in Florida uh, and I'm going to be bringing the lap that we made up here and doing my plate in the future. When I do that, I'll do a video on how to calculate and all that, but um, kind of getting beyond what I want to talk about today, which is what we're doing to the auto collimator. Now, my auto collimator has got a site that you look into. It's kind of like a telescope instrument, so you have to look in here and you read off of a meter in there uh, to determine the angle that your mirror is at. And mine has a, uh, like most auto, auto collimators, it just has a telescope that's coming out or a sight that's coming out the back here. Now, when I was doing my plate, I was having to do squats over here. Uh, I did about 250 squats going around this thing, um, trying to read all these measurements that I had to make the other day. And uh, for an old fat guy, that was pretty rough on his bones. In fact, my muscles are still burning today, uh, two days after I did this. Uh, so what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to put a right angle eyepiece on this. And this was kind of um, really a nice feature to have. I know Lance on his auto collimator's got one. Uh, the Hilger Watts, I don't think this was a standard option. Uh, at least I've never really seen it in any of their catalogs or anything. But uh, whenever I had to previously adapt an eyepiece, when I bought my auto collimator, it did not have an eyepiece. I had to kind of cobble one together. I took a microscope eyepiece, made an adapter. I got it where it works. It works great. Now what I'm wanting to do is put this right angle piece on here as well. Now when I was doing it originally, I was trying to find a right angle piece that I could put in here. I tried a telescope right angle piece. I never could get the optics just right. Uh, I never could get it to focus just right. So I ended up just going with the straight piece here. And I, after going down and using lances and realizing how great <laughs> this right angle eye piece really is, you just lean, lean over and look into it rather than having to squat down to look at it. Um, I have determined I really needed one. So I got to thinking about it and uh, I, I knew that for some cameras, they had these right angle pieces where you can have your camera on tripod, look down into it. And it's designed where it fits on the eyepiece that's already there. So I said, you know what, this might be something that I can work with. So I found this one. This has got a round mount piece on it. Uh, and this is actually a Nikon DR3. That's an older style. And I just bring it up here and kind of holding it in place. It's going to work perfectly. But here's the challenge. I got to make an adapter 
to go from the existing eyepiece, the eyepiece stays in place, but from the existing eyepiece where I can mount uh, this on here and use it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Long introduction to kind of let you know what we're up to, uh, but we're going to be making an adapter so that I can put this right angle eyepiece onto my auto collimator. So when I did this job originally, I took a eyepiece off of a microscope. I had to actually modify it to make it work here to get the right length. I, I turned this piece of brass that's threaded up into the auto collimator here. The uh, eyepiece is pressed into that. So here's the plan. I've got this eyepiece now that I want to mount. Basically, it's just going to kind of go right here. I'm going to make a collar that slides over this piece of brass here. Now, when I made this piece, I purposely made it a little bit larger uh, than the piece out here. This is actually is you can adjust it to focus. But uh, I made this piece a little bit larger than this with the idea that I might eventually have to put something, a sleeve over this, exactly what I'm doing now. So I'm going to make a piece that slides over this. I'll probably put a set screw in there to mount it in place. And then out here in the front, it'll narrow down and we'll, I'm going to make it to the diameter of this outside piece here and probably again put a set screw in there. This is threaded. It's a um, metric thread. Uh, I, I don't really have a way to cut those internal metric threads. Uh, and two, I was looking at this. This is an old used piece that I got off of eBay and it looks like someone has dropped this and bent that thread anyway. I doubt that I could get it to start. So um, I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, we're just gonna push this up inside of a hole. I'll put a set screw in there. Uh, this piece will rotate around that and I think I'll be golden. I think we'll be, be ready to go here. So that's the game plan. We're gonna go over to the lathe. I got a piece of brass and we're gonna start machining out uh, this piece to go on here. So here's just a little chicken scratch sketch of uh, what we're gonna do. I've got a piece of brass. Uh, we're gonna turn this out of. We're gonna drill and bore a hole an uh, inch and a quarter deep. That hole needs to be one inch, 100 thousandths, and uh, I'll have to bore that. I don't have a drill bit that size, uh, but no big deal there. We'll get that down to size, and then uh, I'm gonna cut this thing off to length. Uh, an inch and five eighths. Uh, we'll have a half inch thick area back here and we're going to have to drill and I guess bore again. I'm, I'm assuming this is a metric size, but um, everything I do is in inches. So I'm just uh, got measured what it needs to be as uh, 0.785 inches. Uh, and that should allow that piece to slide up in there and we can test that over on the machine and get it just right. And then uh, we'll have a couple set screws that we'll put in here to tighten these in place. And uh, we should be good. Start by cutting me a piece of stock. I'm gonna cut it a little bit long so I can face it off over on the lathe. There we go. I'm gonna start by facing off the ends of these. Flip that around and do the other side as well. a little bit more. Next up here, I want to drill a hole all the way through this and uh, the smaller end is a little over three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna drill a three quarter inch hole through and that'll give me something that I can start uh, boring on to get my sizes right on either end. But we're gonna do a through hole all the way through. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just spot me a center there. That just gives my drill bit a place to start. 
Next, I'm just gonna go all the way through with a 3 8 inch drill bit, just to get a hole started. And next, a 3 quarter inch hole all the way through. Let me show you my setup here. I'm getting ready to bore this, and I need to bore it to uh, 1.125 inches, inch and an eighth deep. I've got a boring bar set up here, and uh, this boring bar is a, it's a half inch boring bar, so I'm going in three quarter inch hole. This is a nice carbide uh, boring bar that was actually made by Solid Rock Machine Shop. Uh, they uh, sell these little these little boring bars and they're great for doing this little small work like this So anyway, I got it. I zeroed it out here on the end I don't have a digital readout on this lathe So I just got a dial indicator down here a little magnetic mount dial indicator and I've got it set I've I went ahead and used the dial indicator to measure in to my depth and then I got it to where whenever it hits the indicator and goes up to zero that's where I stop at and I'm just got to manually stop it and I'll stop it a little bit short and kind of bump it up to that number and then uh, we'll have our bore to depth and we'll just do the multiple passes until we get down to the where we need to be uh, to get that bore done on the inside so let's uh, let's get going but I wanted you to see what I was using for a stop down here so I can see when I need to stop inside that hole where I can't see what I'm doing all right, we're going to come in here. I'm just going to touch off. We're just going to take our time. And we'll bore that out. I've got my piece that this is going to fit up over, and that's actually a good fit right there. Um, so I'm happy with that. We'll leave that alone. All right, so this side needs to go to 0.785. We're at roughly 0.750 right now, so it doesn't need a lot. I'm going to just come in here, touch off, and just make a clean up pass through there. This is going through a through hole so we don't have to worry about stopping anywhere. It's about 65, I need about 20 more thou on it. Let's test that for fit. And it looks like I need a little bit more. There we go. That's actually a nice fit right there. I want to put a nice chamfer on this edge here. Fairly coarse chamfer. And I'll just uh, 
deburr the inside of these uh, two bores with my little hand deburr. And with that, I think we got our turning done. Next up here, I want to put a couple of set screws in here just to kind of lock that in place. So I've got it over in the middle machine. I need to find the center of this. So I've got an edge finder in the mill. And what I will do is uh, we'll come over here, find the edge of that back jaw. Right there. And then I will go find the edge of the front jaw. I zeroed my DRO on that back jaw. A digital readout. And it's got my, a measurement there. I'm going to take half of that. I'll just use the half function on my DRO. So uh, half, select Y. It gives me a number 3814. Basically, I just go to zero on the DRO. and I am in the center. Getting ready to drill the holes now. And uh, I've checked over there, the smallest set screw I've got is a 632, a number 632, uh, which takes a number 36 drill bit for a tap size. So we're gonna drill two holes. I've made a couple of marks on here where I want to be, which is kind of roughly in the center of those two independent bores. So uh, let's go down here. Drill the first hole. Go over to my line. These lines are just approximate. It really isn't critical that it's in an exact spot. Uh, I just want to be close. And there we go. Just going to tap these by hand. First thing I'm going to do is just uh, deburr that hole in the top. I'll just help that tap get started. And I got a 632 tap here. There we go. And just like that, we've got an adapter made for this eyepiece. And what a difference this makes. Instead of having to crunch down there to look straight through, I can just lean over now, look straight down in here. It's just a seamless operation. This is a huge, huge improvement to this auto collimator. And uh, wasn't too bad. A little short piece of brass, a little bit of time on the lathe. I bought this uh, uh, Nikon angle eyepiece off of eBay used for about 35 bucks, including shipping. Uh, so it's fairly inexpensive upgrade to really turn this into a much more useful um, instrument than it was as it was designed from the factory. So full disclosure here, guys, I will admit that I had to remake this part from the original design. Uh, once I put it over here, the, the first one, I realized that it needed to be, the tube needed to be a little bit longer to get the focal length. It was, it was a little small hole in there and I, I got to experimenting when I pulled it out that site got larger and larger and larger and it optimized at about two inches in length. So I uh, had to make a little modification. Uh, just uh, there's my new drawing with my new measurements in case anybody's trying to copy this. Uh, but anyway, that was just a trial and error thing. Once we got it on there, uh, made those adjustments. So I did that off camera, but I didn't want to just let you know that from my original design, I did have to make slight modification. Well, there we go, just a little quick, easy modification. I can still use this in regular mode with regular eyepiece, uh, or when I want to use the right angle eyepiece, I just slide it on there. 
tighten up my set screw and we're ready to roll. So uh, this is a huge, huge improvement for this particular instrument. I'm really excited to have this and uh, it's going to save my legs next time I have to shoot this uh, surface table or use this auto collimator for a job. And uh, anyway, major upgrade, fairly easy to do. A uh, little short piece of brass, a little uh, eyepiece bought off of eBay used. Total investment in this uh, project, less than 50 bucks. And uh, we've turned it into a much more useful tool. So guys, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, as always, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up or appreciate it, as are those comments. And guys, we will catch you on the next video.